Hey, Wildcats. Okay, so what we've got today is uh, this is a go direct mo rotary motion sensor. This sensor will measure angular displacements, angular velocities, and angular accelerations. Um, basically, you can mount it to a ring stand. Well, we're going to have to mod that at home so we don't have a ring stand. And then this guy spins, and the sensor will spit out the angular displacement data. So, uh, like, if it rotated from here to there, then the angular displacement would have been pi. And if it had done that in, Juno, be quiet. I've got a dog. Her name is Juno. Um, and so if the angular displacement is pi, then, and it happened in two seconds, then the angular velocity would be pi divided by two seconds or one half pi radians per second. That would be the angular velocity. Um, and you may or may not remember the uh, rotational kinematics equations, but uh, you can look those up. So anyways, that happens. Well, if you have a change in velocity, then for, I'm trying to get this light out of the background, I'm just put my big head in the way. Um, so if you had a change in velocity, then an object would have a change in momentum. Linear velocity would have a change in linear momentum. Well, angular stuff is the same way, where if you have a change in angular velocity, then you'll have a change in angular momentum. Now, the thing that could cause a change in linear velocity or a change in linear momentum would be an impulse, which is force multiplied by the change in time. In order to change the angular momentum, you need to apply a torque over some period of time, um, where a torque is r times f, or r perpendicular to f, um, times the change in time to get um, what would be, we would consider an angular impulse. So what we have today is the tool of physics projectile launcher um, that launches these little projectiles of physics. We have the rotary motion sensor that will measure uh, angular displacements, angular velocities, and angular accelerations. And we have an apparatus, oops, that one's not supposed to show up yet. We have an apparatus that will attach to the rotary motion sensor and it'll be able to spin freely. Okay, there's very, very low friction on this, by the way. Um, and so my youngest son designed this catching apparatus to attach to this rod that's gonna get fixed here, okay? And what's gonna happen essentially is we'll take the tool of physics, shoot one of the projectiles into the catching apparatus, it catches and it'll start spinning. Our job or your job is going to be to uh, derive an equation for the moment of inertia, I, the rotational inertia of this apparatus using the conservation of angular momentum, where angular momentum initial is equal to angular momentum final. Big brain stuff. Big brain stuff for sure. Okay. Um, so the initial angular momentum is equal to the final angular momentum. The initial angular momentum of a point mass We'll be treating these as point masses. The initial angular momentum is m times v times r, okay? m times v times r is the angular momentum of a point mass. This thing should start at rest, so it should have no initial angular momentum. And then once it starts rotating, the sensor will be able to give us an angular velocity omega, okay? Uh, you can use your equation sheet, figure out what the angular momentum of like something that rotating is. You'll probably find rotational inertia in that equation and um, sum the parts of the angular momentums at the end. Uh, I'll have a picture that I'll add to the end of this video of my derivation. Um, so pause right now and derive an equation for the moment of inertia of this apparatus um, using the variables m's, v's, r's, and omegas. Um, okay, and right after this, I will post my picture. All right, that's all I got for you right now. Uh, good luck. We will conduct this experiment and get you real numbers here shortly.
Okay, Wildcats, so welcome back. Uh, here I have my derivation for the rotational inertia of the rod um, that's going to end up spinning. So in order to find the rotational inertia of the rod, um, we have to choose an area of physics to apply. Well, there's going to be a collision between the projectile and the rod. And so momentum is always a good way to solve. It's really the only way to solve any collisions. Um, applying the law of conservation of momentum. And that law of conservation of momentum applies to angular momentum and linear momentum. And so the conservation of angular momentum says that absent external torques, angular momentum of a system is constant, it, which is what we would have here in this case. Um, as you can see in my picture here, um, the point mass has uh, mass m and velocity v, and it's going to collide with this little catching device that is going to cause the apparatus to start to rotate. Um, if we consider the point mass and the rod as our system, then there will be nothing outside the system acting. And so it's a closed system with no external torques. That means uh, this torque um, times delta t value is going to end up going to zero. Okay. Um, and that means there's going to be zero change in angular momentum, which means that the final momentum better be equivalent to the initial momentum. That's the only way you can get this part of the equation to equal zero. Um, recall that angular momentum L is equivalent to I, the rotational inertia, times omega, the angular speed or angular velocity. And the angular momentum of a point mass college board gives us is M times V times R, where M is the mass of the point mass, V is the speed of that point mass, and R is the separation between uh, the location of that point mass and the axis of rotation. So over on the right-hand side, you can see I have my full derivation where I zero out the angular impulse um, and set the initial angular momentum to the final, equal to the final angular momentum. Here I have my substitutions. Make sure you pay attention to the subscripts here. Um, this is the initial velocity of the projectile. Uh, if you may recall, we did this earlier this school year where we uh, fired the tool of physics into um, some catching device and you were able to, that was attached to a cart and you were able to measure the velocity of the projectile. Um, I believe it was about 27 uh, meters per second, give or take. We'll get a real value for that here at home um, in a day or so. Um, this VF is the final velocity at, while it's inside the catcher, inside the catching device. Omega F will be recorded by the rotational, um, the rotational motion um, sensor. And IR is the rotational inertia of the rod, which we're going to try to derive and figure out. So you might recall the linear to angular um, equations start with the arc length formula, where arc length is equal to r times um, theta. And we can substitute in our physics terms for that. Delta x equals r times change in um, angular displacement, rather. And then if we divide both sides by time, delta x over time is velocity. And delta theta over time is angular velocity and then divide by time again to get accelerations. So that means V equals R omega. And the reason why I have this is because we're going to need a substitution here for the final velocity of the um, point mass. Um, so the final velocity of the point mass actually is going to be R times omega final. And we'll have omega final from our rotational um, sensor. And so that'll be very, very useful. We'll have a little substitution action right there. And you can see that in this next step. Um, after we get that substitution in, the rest is algebra. And you should end up with an equation for the rotational inertia that looks kind of like this. And hopefully you have that right now. Um, we'll get you some real values on the mass, r, and the initial velocity, and the final angular velocity um, in our next video. So that's all I've got for you right now. Oh.